love, peace, happiness, contentment. Virtues make our life better. Let us ponder on our virtues. Virtues for life. Hello and welcome to Virtues for Life. I am Sister Denise and this program is a conversation between Brahma Kumars and Kumaris about virtues. Virtues, values, qualities and powers, these are the foundations of our lives and these are the things that determine who we are as individuals and the positive contribution we make to global positive change. The laws of spirituality have taught us that if we really wish to be a catalyst for change, then the main way, the principal factor is the change that we make within ourselves and particularly to develop our characters, our virtues, our qualities. Today we're going to talk about the virtue of benevolence and with me in the studio I have Jim Ryan from London. Welcome to Virtues for Life, Thank Jim. Thank you. Thanks for asking me to come. Very well, nice. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, Jim is an educator. He is also a trainer and a consultant. I think you have been in the field many, many years. Jim has been a meditator uh, in uh, England practically as long as I have, 37 years. Um, so a very experienced person in the balance of life in the real world, we can say, uh, without spirituality and the world where people are very focused on spirituality. So as I said, this is a program of conversation between people who are practitioners of Raj Yoga according to the method of Brahma Kumaris. Can you tell us what do you mean when you say the word benevolence or when you feel it? I feel it's a very interesting word, benevolence. Um, it's, I was always fascinated by it and attracted to it because it's, um, it's a term that's uh, it's not, we don't find it too much in the West, benevolence, actually we find the opposite which is really about accumulation. You know that in the West we are bombarded with this, with the concept of accumulation, of, of taking and drawing and, and rather than sharing and giving, because benevolence really for me is about giving and sharing, giving your time, your energy, your, your, your life uh, and bringing people more into the environment and the orbit of your own experiences. In your experience as a teacher with young children, with adults, how do you use benevolence in that arena? Uh, it's a very good question. Um, I, I, it's, I think a difficult question as well, because nowadays uh, education is very prescriptive and children are, um, are programmed into accumulating. It's about accumulation of facts accumulation of certificates, accumulation of praise and acclaim and which which creates a competitiveness and it's and really it, it creates the opposite effect of benevolence they become self-centered self-obsessed and of course with all the knock-on effects that that brings and so their nature of openness and lightness and love and uh, sharing which is I think a natural uh, nature for children is actually stymied by the, by the prescriptive nature, especially in the West, of the educational system. So going back to your question, how, how do I um, deal with it? Well, I kind of break the rules, really, I, and try to talk to children about the stories of, about, of people who are benevolent and, and the reasons why it works and, and do, do scenarios and uh, take them through kind of a lot of different things that make sense to children and they, they can see that. So that they don't take the educational game too seriously? Well, hopefully not. <laughs> because uh, I would think that what you're saying is that education is actually very harmful for children. 
dare I whisper it, yes. <laughs> um, I so a teacher who is benevolent would be quite rare in the system, no? Today, I think in, in all parts of the world, um, educationalists are pressurised into, into, uh, into producing results. Certification, uh, schools achieving results, they're better than another school and so on and so, so forth. So the child is raised to be dehumanised. So what, um, what do you see as the future? Um, within lots of different systems, they're, they're recognising stress, they're recognising hopelessness, uh, futility, children finding they can't reach the, the, you know, the goals that are set. The, the, the goals are so high that the majority of children uh, just feel they can't reach it and so, so they feel despondent. Do they just turn away from school and, and create an alternative reality? I think, Denise, that younger children feel they, they internalise it and they feel hopeless, they feel despondent, they feel very upset. Older children become angry and aggressive and so they react to the system and they also react in society. So the children who are in this kind of stressed out, despondent state, they, they really cannot know who they are. So what happens to a child in that situation if they have a teacher who's benevolent? Um, well, it brings a kind of, you could say, it brings more, more joy and happiness in their lives. I mean, you begin to see children smiling for the first time. Um, you, you see them reacting in a very positive way, enjoying, rather than having this pressure of uh, um, having some achievement in front of them, that they, they come to school having to fulfill certain criteria. But what, they, what I feel for me, how I would, uh, how I interact within, say, an educational situation, would be create a sense of well-being, of safety, security, of happiness, where children begin to laugh and to smile. And this is done so simply, so easily, but by just focusing on things that are of lightness and of love and, 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 the, and the nature of the children themselves and just talk about them. So tell me, I know that um, you've been doing Raj Yoga for many, many years, probably most of your, most of the time that you've been in your career. How yeah. has your meditation practice affected your ability to be benevolent in a bit of a hostile situation? Well, another good question, actually, isn't it? Um, I think it's been progressive. You know, it's been it's part of my evolution, as, in a way. As I got to grips and, and understood myself, as I begin to discover my own capacities and what worked for me, and uh, experimentation upon myself, automatically I began to see, well, if it works on myself, it'll work on other people. So you had to be really benevolent towards yourself because in yeah. the world today, I think people, it's hard for people to feel good about themselves. Yeah, generally most people are programmed into feeling not good. I mean, like the media, Big Brother, since, since they were knee high to a grasshopper, they were told they're not good enough, not clever enough, not big enough, not intelligent enough, you know, and this seems to be the perennial message. So would they grow up um, with this kind of malformation of personality. You know, in school, they, t they talk about um, children with disability, you know, having special needs. But, I, you know, from my own perspective, I'd say everybody has a spe is a special needs mm -hmm. individual because everybody has this disability of their own perception of their own, their own self. Is this something that's been carried on through the generations? Have the parents been programmed that way and they carry that on? Uh, yeah, you've got it absolutely right, yeah. Do, what happens to the benevolence of parents towards children? Um, it becomes very selective, you know. I mean, there is benevolence, but it becomes material mainly. And because, of, I don't know the situation here in India, but I think in the West that because of stress and difficulties, uh, individuals become, find it very difficult to give their time to other people. They're exhausted. So the only way they can actually show any benevolence is by giving something physical. So if a person is spiritually depleted, it's practically impossible to be benevolent because you're just in survival. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we're all 
you're, in a, you're all survived, we're all in a sinking ship. Everyone's like, uh, you know, not only the sink, I think the ship sunk and they were all at sea when they holding with the, the life belts and just going under, I think. So what should we do? I think in a way, it's a, I understand what benevolence is. And I think this is, a, this is a key factor, that I think that we're so programmed, you know, into thinking that accumulation is the way I can then move forward. This seems to, this is the message of consumerism, this is the message of materialism. The more you have, the more you got, the better you'll feel. Well, actually, it's the inverse of what the laws of spirituality says. Whatever spirituality says, whatever you have, you have to give away, which is kind of like it stymies everybody. You know, you, that this is what you've got to give it away. But actually, it's very interesting. I, I love this. I love the philosophy of benevolence that whatever I, I have, I have to give it away for me to experience it. There's a very beautiful <clears throat> teaching that we had very recently that happiness is the one thing that when you give it away, it increases. Yeah, absolutely. Is that connected with benevolence? Because I find a lot of these virtues and values really work with each other. Yeah, I think so. I think it's like that we, even for a spiritual person, what happens is that they can accumulate many things. You can accumulate virtues, you can accumulate values. I can sit in meditation and accumulate what, what we call yogi, yogic power. But unless I, I donate it, unless I use it, then it, I, it's only then that do I activate it. Otherwise, it's become stagnant. You look in Feng Shui, they, they say one of the main negative effects is stagnant Mm. or dormant energy and I think this is what happens with many many people of very uh, you know spiritual outlook unless they use the energy unless we activate it and this activation triggers them this kind of what I call a cycle of return that I send out my good wishes my thoughts or my time my energy whatever I'm giving it goes out to the individual which is then it's, it's triggered again in whatever way, whatever form, and then comes back to me in an active form. So I experience it. By only giving it will I experience it. You're actually sustained by giving. Yeah. And uh, perhaps also that sustains the relationship. And I think this is really what happens is that as I share, you know, whatever I'm sharing, I, and I really feel it doesn't have to be, it's just be inconsequential, it doesn't matter. Whatever you give, it touches, it triggers, it activates something within the other, who, who are they're delighted by this, this brush, this, this gossamer feeling, this vibrational feel, which activates, emerges, and then conjoins with this cycle of energy that's returning back to me. So I experience a double-fold effect, and they're enjoying it, and the, uh, we're conjoined in this very beautiful symbiotic relationship of well-being or happiness. Now, when that goes on between you and your friends, you and your students, you and your colleagues, uh, that's going to make a big, um, a big difference between mm -hmm. you and then the people who are not benevolent. Absolutely. So what happens there? Well, it's very interesting. <laughs> this, you, you very, uh, you've picked up a very good point because this does happen a lot. The people that notice it are the children. Uh -huh. And the how do ch they, they express they, that? Well, they, they say, well, they like being with you. They said, yeah. oh, come, will you come back to us? Because I've experienced something that they haven't experienced before. And they, and they invite, they say, will you come back? We enjoyed being with you. And you do notice that every time you go, you've got a room of smiling faces. And it's quite interesting. So actually they're getting nurtured yeah. by something very, very subtle. Yeah. So children uh, remain intuitive. Do you think that the more they're pushed into the competitive, the, um, the consumerist, that intuition gets sort of beaten out of them? Yeah, absolutely blocked and, and pushed away. And anything that is spont spontaneous, it's beautiful, it's creative, it's, it's you know, that's, that naturally comes from when a child starts to interact with each other, is totally blocked and abnegated. And it's actually, it's frowned upon. And, and the teachers actually are, are almost frightened of it themselves because it triggers something within them. Because when they meet, this is very interesting, that when they meet children who are very loving and very open, it somehow also prevents a mirror to, to the teacher uh -huh. who doesn't want to embrace it or doesn't want to acknowledge it because it's an avenue that maybe they're a bit fearful to go down or they can't handle. 
It's difficult for people to work with their true feelings. Yeah. Uh, perhaps because they've gone into a kind of false consciousness. Yeah, absolutely. How has your spiritual practice developed your sense of pure consciousness? That's, I think that's a very difficult question, I think. Um, within the teaching sphere, you're asking Any me. Any human sphere. My pure, this, this aspect that within everybody there's a universal truth, a universal consciousness, a universal, these, these primal spiritual energies that are in every soul. And in a way, my, my interactions have been almost intuitively connected with these, that I tend to try and connect on this level, rather than on the level of form or role or status or position or whatever. And that, that's the way I've been connected. I, I've tried to connect, and I do connect with others, on this level of pure spiritual synchronicity. The heart. Yeah, the heart. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we've come to the end of our time, so I'd like to thank you very much for your insights, your wisdom, and the clarity, I think, the perhaps even some questions that you've put out into the minds of our viewers here about the role of education, about um, the, the things that are happening to children in the world today. So this has been Virtues for Life, and we have been talking with Jim Ryan about the virtue of benevolence. Let us ponder for a moment about benevolence, the desire that others should benefit, that they should feel good, that they should receive good. Uh, it is about generosity, it is about giving, it is ultimately about love. So thank you all for joining us today on Virtues for Life. I look forward to being with you all again very soon. Om Shanti.